All right, Lost Light crew, it's photo day. Everyone get in here. Rodimus, yes, of course, you're in the middle. Big guy in the back, Magnus, that's the rule. Sunstreaker, Drift, thanks for making it. Ratchet and Trail Break... Uh, trail Cutter, sorry. Cyclonus, yes, this won't take long. Uh, Perceptor, Whirl... Uh, okay, Whirl's not coming. I can get Cyclonus here, but not Whirl. All right, I guess that's all that's going to show up. I'll go ahead and take the... F Yo, actually, there seems to be a gap in the crowd. That's that's no good. Let's just pull someone random in here, just, just to make the photo look nice and even. It's going to be Swerve, taking the photo. One, two... Oh, come on! That's four times now! This is so getting old. Good news, everyone. The rumor was false. This wave wasn't canceled after all. Bad news. There's a reason I have mine already. <laughs> oh, forget that. Let's see if Swerve deserves those overcharged eBay prices that will hopefully soon be deflated. As a change of pace, he's a little red pickup truck of generic make and model. I say change of pace, because for years, Swerve has been the generic name used for any red repaint they've wanted to make, and sometimes even original molds, and usually they're red sports cars. Swerve only returned to his pickup truck roots recently, and now is back in a G1-inspired toy. All things considered, he's pretty basic in red with black windshields, though they did paint the rims of the wheels, which is kind of getting rare these days. Silver and white deco the front grille and bumper to break up the red in front, while the bed of the pickup is clearly the front of his legs. No real getting around that, as I'm not sure what these white things could be. Too low for a roll bar and, well, too high for anything that's sitting in the bed. Trick to the Legends line is, sometimes there's some obvious details left around because of the size. Swerve does have some parts molded in that aren't befitting of a truck, but overall, he does what he should and makes a solid little vehicle. There's also a hole on top. I wonder what that's for. That is for another time. Let's transform him for now. Not gonna lie, it's uneventful. Don't even have to fast forward this one. Not the most interesting, but it's efficient. No need to be overly complicated like some toys, which I prefer. Robot mode is pretty much everything you'd hope for out of a little swerve for your collection. You know, minus the wit and supply of Energon beverages, that's up to you to provide. There's a lot more white going in this mode, and that fits his original G1 design spot on. More specifically, it fits the IDW design spot on. That's especially true in the head sculpt that's given a toothy grin of an expression. I'd have liked it if the open mouth had been painted to separate it out. The white paint tends to wash out the details, but I like that they've taken the extra step to getting the character's personality into the toy. The rest is just as nicely sculpted, with all the vents of the original design included and painted in silver, which is also covering the legs. This is also the only odd part of the design, as they have a weird bend to them to facilitate transformation. Not too bad though, so not going to make a big deal out of it. Articulation is simple, ball jointed shoulders, elbows, hips, and hinged knees. Feels like it should have neck and waist rotation, but what he has gets a good range, so at this size, I'm not too upset over it. What I really love is just how clean this toy feels. I get an honest Cybertron Scout class feel from this figure. He's very solid. Great tolerances. The plastic feels good. There's even minimal hollowing to him. Plus, no kibble. The one bit of shell was his hood that's currently the canopy over his head. And it's not even shell that had to peg into six places to stay put. 
Going back to vehicle, things use only as many tabs as necessary. They go into place and stay there without making a puzzle out of the toy. I've missed that solid engineering so much. Then there's his partner figure, Flanker. Cast in dark blue and decoed in white, it's a tiny little jet of basic details. I tend to think of it more like a spy drone, as there's no apparent cockpit. It's simple, but neat enough to work. Transforming it is as simple as folding up the nose cone and folding the wings back in a very MicroMaster style transformation. That's befitting, as the design is actually based on G1 Sky High, just with main colors switched. Like the other Legends partners, he's simple, up and down shoulders only. But I really like the design on him. Something about having a white body similar to Swerve's makes the two work together, despite the contrast in the main colors. Where he shines is weapon mode, where his torso and legs fold out to reveal the barrel of the weapon. The result is a hand cannon with a lot of blades on top from the wings and tail fins. It's no my first blaster, but there's a lot of nicely molded details on the underside of the wings, and I love the triple barrels making this look like a heavy weapon. Way too heavy to ever trust to swerve, so what fool let this happen? On the upside, it's probably my favorite of the Legends partners so far, as all three modes stand pretty well on their own. Whether they're the original size or this new one, I've always felt Legends worked best when they brought back the smaller characters that seemed to suit the size. This is just as true now. Swerve is a very solid and clean toy. Granted, if you're after an involved or clever transformation, you're going to be disappointed. But chances are you're after him due to his comic book appearances, and he represents that very well. Together with Flanker, they're a great two-pack, possibly my favorite of the size class so far, and I doubt anything on Earth is going to compare anytime soon. Ah, scrap. <laughs>